Hello. As a gear retailer, this is going to sound like some April Fool's joke, and it is, but not on you. See, I've been wearing body armor for 20 years because that's what motorcyclists wear. Like helmets are hard and headlights are bright, pads are safe. That's my instinct, and it's wrong. Mostly, motorcycle gear comes with shoulder, elbow, hip, knee, and the back pad. And mostly, that's the clunkiest part about riding gear. But I never questioned its usefulness. And at most, I wondered whether wearing a CE1 pad would be safe enough compared to the even more annoying CE2s. So I did some surface-level digging and pulling studies from the last 10 years, reading the booklet. You don't have to dig deep to see these things in a different color. See. EN 1621 states that a pad has to take a realistic 50 joule hit and transmit less than 18 kilonewtons, a CE2 pad less than 9. Hmm, what is the breaking strength of the strongest human bone? 4 kilonewtons! Horse girls get body armor certified to that 4 kilonewton threshold, so why is our motorcycle stuff 2 to 4 times weaker? Now, Paul Varnsvery works in performance verification and accreditation. He tests this stuff. And Paul says, the standard for motorcyclists limb joint impact protectors set unadventurous requirements, but were what the industry supported. Remember that. The explanation was that the standards requirements were minimum. And manufacturers were free to develop higher performing products. The actuality is that in the mass market where price point is critical, there was and is little or no ambition or incentive to do better than the standard requires. That apathy extends to our body sizes too. EN 1621 sets a minimum size called Type B. In theory, manufacturers are free to make them bigger, but again, material is money and variety is cost. So you with your extra extra small jacket are going to get a Type B pad, and you with your extra extra large jacket are going to get a Type B pad. These are just too small and too thin to be of statistical benefit, and the research can prove that. See, what they do is they look at a few thousand motorcycle crashes with known injuries, and then they ask each person what they were wearing. No jacket, a motorcycle jacket, an armored jacket, no pants, motorcycle pants, armored pants. Then you just try to correlate the injury patterns with the use of body armor. But from Liz Jerome's study in 2011, despite the reduced risk of bruises and abrasions when wearing body armor, the benefits could not be detected, specifically in relation to fractures. The in 2017, the allowable transmitted force of EN 1621 may be too high to effectively reduce the probability of impact injury. This is not surprising given human tolerance levels that are reported in literature. No significant difference was found between the impact protector's material hardness and the presence of an impact injury. In Danu in 2018, the protective effect was mainly due to a reduction in abrasions and lacerations. Protective clothing did not reduce the risk of fracture, dislocation, or sprain. In Meredith in 2019, the relationship between impact protector performance in the European standard, test method, and injury protection remains unclear. So why then are these things everywhere? I think it's not about protection so much as protectionism. See, the European standard stipulates that any Class A, AA, AAA rated garment must be sold with these impact pads. That's something like a leather jacket or a thick denim pant. It's actually illegal in a motorcycle shop in Europe to sell a Class A garment without these. And what that means is that Revit, Alpine Stars, Dainese, Ixon, Furigan, they don't have to compete shelf to shelf with universal brands like Coach or Levi's or Patagonia. Never mind that the pads do nothing to protect our bones, they're very effective at protecting a captive market for the motorcycle industry. Remember, it was the gear manufacturers that lobbied for such a low performance threshold to begin with. And there's actually a term for this when a regulation meant for our public safety gets co opted by an industry to become a convenient barrier to entry for its own competition. The term is regulatory capture. That is the quiet part, the quiet term said loud. Now we have to be careful where we arrive with this because this stuff is life stuff. So first, there are 
standalone back pads that look like this, that go way beyond CE standards. I wear this on race day, it works. And there are airbags that go way beyond CE standards. I wear this every day, it works. But should we stop putting up with these tokens? And I won't sit here and tell you to take the armor out of your jacket because it is somewhat protective. Of course it is. You can slide on this. It might save you a bruise. Maybe in some statistical anomaly, it'll save you a fracture. I can't tell you to take the armor out of your jacket. I can just tell you that I take the armor out of my jacket and I love it. Life is so beautiful, our instinct is going to be to protect it. But our imperative, we have to remember, is to appreciate it.